Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Late Night Magic. I am Jesus Magic, joined as always with my late night compañero, Piano Rob. What's up, my man? Hey, Gene. How are you? I, you know what? I couldn't be better, man. I couldn't be better. Uh, fun guest in tonight, guys. Fun mm -hmm. guest. Camilo Jimenez Varone is in the house. Um, Colombian actor. I can't wait to talk to this because he's got a really, really cool project coming up with uh, a, a fantastic actress, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but you know what? Yeah. And he's coming all the way from Colombia. So we went international today, guys. We're international right now. So um, yes. we're going to talk to him in a moment. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm, in, I'm enjoying some life right now. And uh, how you been? I, I, you know me. I, I cannot complain. We're bit, we're busy. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's gonna be fall time at this point. At, at this point of our out. show, which is, which blow yeah. my mind, Gene. Blow my mind. Yeah, I, the year yeah, is moving. It, it is definitely, it is definitely moving. Um, and yeah, I, I listen. We're having such a good time on this show. I don't know if people realize how how much work we do put into this show. We do put a lot in, right? We, we figured what I think what in, at least four days a week we're working on the show, maybe even five, like like a full time yeah. job. So, mm -hmm. um, thank God none of us work a nine to five that we can do it. So, uh, but we have a good time, man. It, it, it's at, fun at some all, point all we might around. have to. It's, we'll see. Yes, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> right? We'll see. It's yeah. Tell me about it, especially if you're paying Pat per diem as a producer. Uh, it's killing me. Um, oh, but you know what? <laughs> he's expensive. He's expensive. <laughs> he's expensive. It's expensive, uh, and not and let's, and let's face it, with the amount of errors he makes, is it really worth it? So I'm just saying, he might yeah. be part of the uh, the cost cutting procedures that we may need to do. But gonna, uh, he is a producer. Error today. clause. <laughs> yeah, right. He is fines he is. and stuff. There we go. Um, but guys, we're gonna take a short commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna have our guest Camilo Jimenez Varon. So let's uh, take that break. Winnie the Cute. Cute. Oh, Winnie the Cute. All right, friends. Well, this is the Diz Nerdy Network uh, and all the amazing content creators that are going to be contributing. Uh, uh, Rosie and Rob and Ali and Sammy and Tinker J and Vicky and Joe and Greg and Gina and Miriam. We're all going to be here making magic for you. So hit that subscribe button. Stick around with us. And uh, Gene, you're going to throw a pen? Is that going to happen? You want to get us out of here? Well, you know, guys, let's, 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 let's kick it old school. Guys, have a great today, a better tomorrow, and we will see you next time. 9 p.m. <laughs>
Okay, well, I was born in Manizales, uh, but I am, you know, I am from Bogota because my family oh. is from Bogota and uh, all my roots are from here. Uh, so the fact that I was born in Manizales, it was just kind of an accident and I was raised over there for 10 years. But uh, to answer your question, uh, the difference is actually that in Manizales, the culture is very familiar, traditional, uh, conservative. So that is why, I, even though I am from Manizales, I am not from that culture because my family is not grounded there. So since I came okay. here to Bogota, okay. when I was 10 years old, uh, I, you know, forgot about, you know, being kind of a Manizales person, but... <laughs> Uh, the the character that I am portraying in uh, the series in which I will I, I am working at, he's from Manizales. Oh, that's a coincidence, right? Wow. So I I would guess wow. it's something similar to the if, if people from Texas and New York, right? I guess right. It would say that that might be like the difference in the American version of of that difference. So Manizales, Manizales is subscribed to the Paisa culture, you know the mm -hmm. you know culture from Medellin. From Armenia, from Pereira, the, all the cafe, the coffee region of Colombia, uh, which is kind of uh, the the culture of the paisas, mm -hmm. you know, it, okay. it would be you know, the paisas from Antioquia would discuss this, but uh, it's a fact. I mean, people from Manizales is paisa. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. Okay. So, were you always interested in being an actor, even as a child? Like, was it something that was always like, you always felt like an urge to want to be, to perform, to act? Yeah, I, I my father was a theater actor when he was young. And uh, okay. he, uh, since I was a child, he was, uh, you know, like, urging us to read uh, Lorca, to read uh, Stanislavski, to read all the, you know, authors that are related with the, with the drama and with the theater scene. Mm. So, I was an actor since I, since I was a child. Uh, that was my call and that was my my vocation. But I decided when I was a when I was a, a teenager that uh, I decided that I was too afraid of become uh, you know a fail a failure actor. Mm -hmm. So I decided oh. to don't study uh, as a professional career the acting and the, and the performing career. It was a long journey for me to reconcile my acting, you know, uh, aspects of my life uh, because I was, I, I didn't even study uh, as a professional career acting or theater. Yeah, I was, I saw how you actually, I believe you graduated a degree in philosophy at, from university, correct? So yeah, well, I, you did your homework. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. I have nothing he else did. to do. <laughs> so, but, so what from from studying philosophy in university, what made you finally get the the, the nerve up to just to go out and 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 try to act? Like, obviously, the the passion was there. What gave you that push that you needed to finally say, "Hey, I got a degree in philosophy, but I really I want to try this acting thing." What was it for you that gave you the push? Okay, well, I'm I'm gonna try to make it short. Um, okay. There's, there's a philosopher uh, called uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein, uh, a German philosopher of the 20th, 20th century. He has a phrase which is pretty, you know, uh, meaningful to me. Uh, and it says, it goes like, uh, genius, genius or death, you know? Mm. Okay. So, uh, um, it, it says something like, uh, whenever you discover which is your talent, which, which is the reason why you are here in this world, there is no other choice. You must do what you are called to do here in this, you know, world. So, uh, yeah. I, I was a contestant in a reality TV show, Big Brother in 2003, mm. and I was eliminated mm. At the first week, I was the first one in, in get get out of the house. Mm. So uh, that was kind of a beginning because they wa they wanted me to be a scriptwriter for for TV shows. So uh, I got like two or three uh, semesters left in the university. So I started to study the second area 
it was three. So I started to study film uh, in the university along with philosophy. So uh, when I started to study film, I recovered the passion of uh, being a filmmaker more than an actor. I started to study script, uh, screenplay, screenwriting, uh, drama, uh, character drama, history of the film, and a lot of things that were very, you know, uh, they they were pretty complementary issues to the philosophy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever acting, or whenever I am directing or doing stuff for for the filmmaking career that I got, I am actually doing philosophy. Yes, I get yes, that, I like that. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and it's funny that you broke. I was actually going to go there next. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Rob. No, no, I was I was going to agree totally because I went to school for for business for marketing, and I oh my passion was always music and piano playing, and it's like and whatever you do, you're gonna come back to that passion or else you're fighting yourself. But on the flip side, I feel I still use that business and marketing every day in 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 what i do and you did the same thing with philosophy your philosophy is still very rooted in you and probably makes you a, a better actor which is an amazing use of it yeah that's for sure and actually uh, since the philosophy is the you know the seek for the truth uh the only place where i found the truth as an experience is representing the action, which is the essence of the acting, uh, because you live the action yeah. and you yeah. live the truth. Uh, mm. You know. So for me, I am doing the same as a philosopher do, but uh, in different fields. I am looking for the truth yeah. all the time, the same way as a philosopher is looking for the truth truth in his desk or in his class uh, rooms and, and all of that. Actually, I was a teacher before and I was, oh. you know, I, I got to practice my career. Uh, and in that journey, I discovered that I got no choice, man. I, I, wa I want the child that I was wanted to be an actor and wanted to, you know, make it in Hollywood and all of that. So yeah. in life, I am not going to disappoint that child yeah i like that man yes. i love that i love that yes. um you know, and, and so you touched on basically learning a lot of other aspects of film uh, directing script writing production editor sound department camera electrical department and cinematographer and then uh, then actor um so i mean you've done just about I, it's like you're a one-man movie making machine right you've done pretty much everything you need to do um <laughs> it, it, to make a film did you was that to help you kind of learn did you, was that on purpose so you could learn the complete ins and outs of making a film or was it you were just trying to take roles here and there on on sets to to just continue to get into into acting well um when i when i got when i got kicked out from the reality tv show the only uh, job offer that i got out of, out of that was a scriptwriter job job mm -hmm. so i had to learn about scriptwriter and four years after i was in the reality tv uh which i am not going to tell for long what did i do during those four years even you know real estate seller and, and all of that agent uh, uh so the first job that i ever had in a tv show was a scriptwriter a, a, a scriptwriter job mm -hmm. and a research uh, and since I was a philosopher, I was good at writing. So uh, I started to make my career as a filmmaker or as a TV producer first than my career as an actor in a professional, uh, you know, level. So the years that I spent in the, the reality TV business, because I, I became a director of reality TV shows and a scriptwriter of reality TV shows and a producer of reality TV shows, it gave me, you know, the, the necessity of going back to my real passion, which was the fiction format. So mm. during the time that I was, uh, you know, practicing my career as a, as a TV producer of non-fiction format, 
I discovered that my real passion was to become a filmmaker, to become a person that is an author, that is able to, you know, uh, put into a, a scene uh, something that is from my own, something that is written uh, by me and all of that. And, uh, but at the same time, I was TV commercial model and, uh, you know, the things started to, you know, mix up and there was a point in which I had to be very honest to myself and to ask the real question, this, is this what I really want to do with my life? to become a, a successful reality TV producer, which I was already, uh, but there was something inside of me that was telling me, dude, this is not you. It's like climbing the mountain that is right in the side of the mountain that you are, that you really want yeah. to climb. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can get to see the top of the other mountain and uh and you are in the wrong mountain so i had to go back go, go back down the mountain and started to climb again another mountain uh it was not easy it is not easy uh because when you get when you become a well-known person as a tv producer and then your partners of your uh, get to see you in an audition they are like hmm, this is weird this guy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that break is pretty hard to get committed with because that is a point in which you start to realize, well, is this what I really want? And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, I even I have to say that even though when I was uh, a teenager, I had I was really afraid of the failure actor figure. Yeah, the was so honest and the calling was so you know deep that in at one point when i had when i had a pretty successful career as a tv producer i was like dude it doesn't matter if i am a failure actor that is what i want to do and it doesn't matter if i fail or if yeah. i i don't become a movie star or something like that it doesn't matter i'm just gonna do what i love even if i get poor and lonely and isolated and all of that. I, I, I love you know that. What? Just put it out there, you know? And and let's be honest, because I think there's also another nice little lesson. All the negative stuff you said at the end is probably would never happen because your passion is so deep. You Maybe you won't make it. Maybe you wouldn't make it to some super high place, but you're never going to be alone or your work was never going to be bad because you're too passionate about your work. And so why not go after that? It's, it's difficult to understand that, especially for my fellow, uh, you know, actors that maybe are watching this, but uh, to face the failure, even though the passion could, you know, kill the failure, uh, is important because the only motive that you have for real to enjoy this career and to, the, to enjoy this journey is your own quality the, the quality of your job your own passion your own talent and that is yeah. above any other thing that is like a distracting point the, the fame yeah. the stars the you know the show business and all of that so yeah it, it has a little bit of sense to to know that being a passionate person will, will carry some success in the career but i must say I am 40 years old, and my first big gig was just when I was 39. Uh, so the five or six years previous to this nice gig were pretty difficult, and and it it doesn't get easier with the time uh, because yeah. you all the time are tempted to drop it and to you know this is not for me, and I'm not going to do it anymore. So. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that keeps you on track is the passion. And that is the clue for the opportunities to come. Because if you're not ready, if you're not passionate about the things that you are doing, the opportunities that are going to come are not going to be, you know, for you. Yeah. Uh, you're going to yeah. be able, ready to take them. Definitely. I like uh, that. Do, now, do you see yourself getting doing like so? As you're segueing into an actor and, and you're doing all this, as you're getting these, these roles, like I said, you're, it's like the biggest one of your career is now. You're right in the midst of it. 
do you see yourself getting back into producing too and directing too? Like, do you, would you like to direct a film that you were actually a part of? Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, after we finished the Griselda project, uh, I got a you know a gig to direct a music video for a, for a new artist that is coming. Mm -hmm. A career as a director is kind of I believe is harder than than the career as an actor uh, because for for you to have a job as a director, you need to have like a hundred people uh, behind you mm -hmm. and uh, and a hundred thousand dollars. And uh, you know, and a hundred of uh, assistants and and all of that. So to gain credibility as a director is kind of hard. And if you uh, are a, a reality TV director, it's harder even because the realities are not a very well, you know, appreciated genre in, in the audiovisual business because mm. everybody thinks that the realities uh, they make by themselves. It's just like oh yeah. somebody says CCTV and then they get to the screen, which is not true. I respect a lot of the people that uh, make reality TV shows because they are pretty recursive. They are pretty fast, efficient. They can solve problems like in a, under pressure better than any other professional in the in the in the audiovisual industry. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I am clear, now that I am, or after I got clear about the about the, my passion and about that I am an actor and I am a director, a fiction director, it doesn't matter if you go if you go and produce a reality TV show or if you go to uh, be a storyteller in a reality TV or even if you start to chop onions in a restaurant or uh, go to work in a farm or, you know, become a, you know, ballet parking or something like that. It's yeah, yeah. just a way to survive uh, while you get in, into your real place. Yes. And that, and that's, and that's important. I think a lot of people, you have to find that balance there. You have to find a way to, to survive and support yourself while you're cultivating this, this passion that you want to get to. Yeah. There's a lot of people that actually, you know, partners in my in in in, in the series, uh, they uh, shot a scene, and then uh, the next day they had their shift in the restaurants that they were working at. So it's a hard, very hard career, but mm -hmm. the satisfactions that it brings that it brings are so. I mean, it's hard to describe the satisfaction that you get when you make just one line that is like the whole world the whole universe the whole mm. you know all your journey and all your sacrifices and all of that mm -hmm. it got sense it, it, it makes sense when you are in the in the set or in the plateau or in the you know theater uh, stage uh, just delivering a line and, and confirming uh, to yourself that this is the way that it was correct yeah. It's like and, the culmination of it. And what is not a fulfilling life other than those moments? That yeah, that exactly. And and, and whenever whenever the opportunity comes, and whenever the 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 chance to to show your talent comes, it gives sense to all the sacrifices, to all the bad moments, to all the hard work that you already put in in this path uh, because it's a path that is it's a non-ending path I, I i mean you can be here today and you can be like in a series with sofia vergara and all of that but at the next day you are you know directing a low budget music video for a new artist it's still mm. gig work. It's still once yeah. the project. It, and, and I think that's what people don't understand. No matter how big of a star you are, it's still there's no security in that sense. It's always, well, I finished this project. I'm waiting to get hired for the next project. That, yeah, that's on to the next one. The next and check. Some, and some people are very uncomfortable with that. They want security. They can't live that lifestyle. Yeah, it's just a matter to watch a film from 1992 or 1994 or 1987 and you see a bunch of actors that at the time were stars and famous and all of that and now you don't get to hear anything from them even people with stars in the hollywood 
walk of fame and yeah and yeah i mean this this is something that you don't i don't know i mean maybe i'm wrong but if you start to believe that you are like um, like a god or something like that i mean maybe you're gonna be successful and all of that but at the minimum uh you know fall that you have in your career that is gonna be so frustrating that i don't want to yeah. imagine that yeah so, sure well and you know what? That is why we do this show, because we have such wonderful people on the show. You're a very talented person, but you're you're just a good person going through life. And we love to show our audience. We're, we're all just people trying to find our own way to fulfillment. And yeah. most of most of us is with with finding that passion and hard work for that passion. And we create those moments. That's what that's what it's about. Uh, yeah, I think I think the fact that we're able to show the behind the scenes look to a lot of the people that come on that they're not just what you see on film or wherever it might be. Seeing the struggle of, and some of the hard work that got put into it, I feel like is one of the biggest appreciations that me and Rob have for the show. Um, and and you pretty much put it right there because you like you said you had such a passion for it. You went through a bunch of different directions and you were like, I don't care if I'm going to fail or not. I got to just do it. Um, I yeah. got to just put it all on the line. And and that is one of the most commendable things. I think we can we can say is people that just stick to it and just say whatever happens happens. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try at least. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it everything I got, and that's what you can do really at the end of the day. And you just just hope that that it's a, that people like it. And it seems like again, it seems like things are going really well right now. It just came you know you just wrapped on a, on a on a potential huge hit, and we're gonna get to that in a minute. But um, you know, let's let's also talk about this. Is there a, a thought of you maybe getting into crossing over into American films, or do you feel comfortable in in um uh, latin films and if you did crossover what is what is the crossover like what's some of the 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 obstacles uh um spanish actors and south american actors have to face in that crossover that's a that's a pretty cool question because uh i am not the stereotype of the you know latin person or the or or of the colombian person as mm -hmm. the world knows it even though in colombia and in South America, there's a lot of people with, you know, blue eyes and blonde yep. hair and all that because we are, uh, you know, a mestizo culture. And uh, that is something that the, the same or the, the very industry have, uh, you know, mis misunderstood because all the time the Latin people is more like a dark skin or dark hair and dark eyes and all of that. So nowadays, the market is changing the the things are getting more inclusive and we are getting aware that there's a lot of people that even they are colombians i don't really know if i have uh, or in which generation are my you know ancestors that are immigrants from another place and all of that i am colombian i am a, i am a colombian person mm -hmm. I, I am too colombian actually but here in Colombia, uh, I am I am on vacation. I'm not I'm not here, you know, for for my life. I live in Los Angeles, and why I live in Los Angeles? Because I thought that here in Colombia, I was not Colombian enough for the market yeah, to yeah, get okay. jobs yeah. in Colombian, mm. you know, production. But since I am uh, and I and I look like a gringo. Uh, up there in 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 united states but my my english is always with an accent so i thought that i was i, I was like in between you know a difficult character to you know cast because this guy looks like a like a gringo but his english is not like the gringo style yeah but yeah yeah this guy looks like a gringo but it doesn't he doesn't look like a colombian so we are going to give him jobs as a foreign person. So I got to specialize in foreign accent uh, characters. So to answer your question, I am comfortable in projects with high quality. Uh, okay. And what I mean with high quality projects that um, that challenges me to do things that in any other project i could have the opportunity to to make even yes. though in the school because i i i have i mean i have an idea which is that the school brings certain 
amount of quality, but up there in Hollywood, let, let's say Hollywood, uh, the productions are, they, they have a quality that you cannot see in a school or you cannot mm -hmm. see uh, maybe in a soap opera or maybe you cannot see in a low budget production. It, it's not that you become picky with the budget or something like that, but it's inevitable to, to see how the actors improve with every project. Every project is like yeah. a new school for the actors. And I believe that up there in America, in Hollywood, or, or whenever, however you want to call it, uh, the quality is always rising. So the challenge is always rising too. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. yes. For sure. Yes. So um, was there an actor or an actress that when you first started crossing over into the acting portion of, of your career, was there someone that kind of took you under their wing, kind of showed you the ropes a little bit? Like a friend or like a... Person? Yeah, like a friend or someone in the industry Ment that said... Ma maybe like a, a mentor. mentor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, besides the mentors that I already got, um, I, had a, I had a girlfriend when I, was a, when I was a reality TV director. I had a girlfriend uh, who was a pretty famous actress here in, in Colombia called... Uh, she's named... Connie Camelo, and uh, she's a top actress here, and, and she's so talented and, and, and so disciplined with her work that when we were together as a couple, uh, I started to feel this calling, you know, that, dude, I am in the wrong place. Why I, why I am not doing what she does, which is being passionate about the acting career. So... She wasn't like a mentor or, or she, she was not like a person who taught me directly things or something like that, but she worked as an inspiration for me. Mm. Uh, actually, when we were together, uh, I decided to, you know, jump to the water and just do it. And yeah, it started with that. So but you kind of I like paved the way, kind of, I guess, or shown you like the way to be, the way to be a professional actor is what we're saying, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I was like 32 years old when, when I decided to, you know, I'm not going to do any, anything else besides getting auditions and uh, writing my own stuff to try to produce her, to produce it, uh, my films and my products. So it was a decision that I made when, when, even when I was a successful person in another field of this same business. So yeah, yeah, I, I got that with, with her. She is my friend uh, now, and we are very close friends. And she still works as an inspiration for me. Now we are colleagues. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, who's a director out there that you would like your dream director to work for, to work under as an actor? Oh man, there are a lot of them. I love, I would love to work with David Cronenberg. Mm. Uh, that would be like my, you know, the point that I have always dreamed of yeah. would be great David Cronenberg film. Of course, Tarantino, he is one of the top uh, directors. Yeah. Dennis Smith, um, Nicholas Winding Refn, uh, I love him. I love his work. Uh, but if I had to choose one, it would be it would be hard. But I wouldn't know how to decide between you know David Cronenberg or maybe Werner Herzog or maybe Tarantino. Uh, those are like the you know Woody Allen. It's yeah, hard. I, I love I love director, and I must say. I didn't, I didn't know about him like too much. I, of course, I knew about him, but uh, Andy Baez, who is the director of uh, Griselda in Netflix, he is a genius, and I am pretty mm. honored to already have worked with him and yeah. with that director of that level of you know, creativity and yeah. I'm in, there, in, in his work. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Now, what about an actor or an actress? Is there an actor or an actress that would be like your dream to share the screen with? 
Oh yeah, of course. Uh, I would love to to share screen with you know Michael Shannon would be oh. pretty cool. Yeah, he's a great actor. Screen with uh with Amy Adams, she's so yeah, talented, yeah, yeah. and her quality of acting is so cool. Um, I would love to share uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, yeah. I love the way he acts of the of the you know old glories. He's not able to do, and it would be like an utopia right now. But uh, Jack Nicholson would be like, you know, a dream for me. Mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah. They, you know, I love actors with a lot of character and with, you know, deep character. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Appreciation yeah, so, of the so, art. Yes. I yes. Exactly. Amy, exactly. Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, and actually, um, I, I am like mentioning. The, the cast of a movie which is called no, Nocturnal Animals. So let's say that I would, I have, I would love to be uh, part of the cast of a movie like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what I love is Michael Shannon's a different name. We've never had Michael Shannon yet, and I feel like it, it, you know what I love. I feel like Michael Shannon is one of those actors that steals the scenes every time he's in he's in something. And boy, he was fantastic in Boardwalk Empire um, when he was part of that series. Uh, Michael Shannon is one of those guys I don't think you ever think of on the top of your head, but I'm glad you mentioned him because he's an actor in Hollywood that definitely deserves some recognition because I feel like he's oh. just, I don't know what it is that he's not usually in the, your first train of thought of great actors, but he really is. I, I, I can't think of a role that I've seen him in that I wasn't like, wow, he blew me away. Maybe Kangaroo Jack. I was a little, it was a little. And, for him, and Gene, another friend of the show, uh, composer Dom Lewis, Michael Shannon was also in his movie a couple of months ago, Bullet Train. Yes, he was. That's a good point. I mean, so, and actually, um, yeah, Bullet Train. I I haven't got to see to watch Bullet Train, but the costume designer of uh, Griselda is the same costume designer in Bullet Train. Oh, so, very cool, very cool. We cool. we are uh, friend of the show. We actually we've actually interviewed him a few times. Dominic Lewis is the he's he did the score for uh, for Bullet Train. So, um, but yeah, so we we were all over Bullet Train when when, when that popped out. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that's, that's, that small world. Right. And and again, I love the Michael Shannon answer because, uh, he is one of these actors that is just deserves so much more credit than I think he, than he gets, yeah. um, you, to get to, uh, to perform alongside with people like Michael Shannon, it would be like, you know, intimidating and all of that. But as I told you before, that would be like, you know, improving the quality yeah. of work because when, whenever you run instead and you have to act with Michael Shannon, you you cannot panic. You're gonna be like, oh, I forgot my lines. I, I yeah, blunt. yeah, he's intense. He he, I I, I don't know if he's a method actor, but I feel like he he looks like a method actor. He looks like one of those guys that's like in character all all the time. He's intense. well, and it's it's people that are gonna make you elevate your level, and that's who you want to be around. Yeah. You have to you have to rise up to match their level, and that's. Like I always say, I would love to be if I'm doing a, a a show or you know whatever if I'm playing or not. I want to be the worst one on stage. If I'm the worst one on stage, then that means I I hope we have a pretty good show because I'll try to rise to meet everybody's level. I don't want to be the best. I want to make me make me work. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. we hired Patty Puddles as our producer. <laughs> he makes us look good, but not in the right way. In the other way. So. <laughs> Um, you know, you've actually worked with a lot of, uh, a, a, a really, uh, I'll just, I'll just say some of, the, some of the most beautiful actresses maybe on the planet. Um, you did, I know you were in an episode of Sinsenos, uh, I Paraiso with the gorgeous Carmen Villalobos. Did you get to do a scene with her too or no? With, uh, Carmen Villalobos is the yes. name of her. Oh yeah, she's gorgeous. Actually, when <laughs> I went, when I in that and uh, I had a girlfriend at that time and I, I I wrote a tweet about the you know about Carmen Villalobos beauty and I got a lot of trouble with that. <laughs> I'm I'm probably gonna get in trouble when my wife sees this too for saying that. We actually watched the original version of that show together and it's obviously everyone knows it's a novella, it's not in English, so I had to use the subtitles, but we watched the original version, which was I believe um uh, was it uh, no I parody? No, uh, was it no I parody? So what? Are, I forget the name of the original version because there was a couple of different versions as it as it came as it went through. Yeah, I knew it, that you mentioned it because it's not the work that I feel most proud of. You know, it it, it is from a stage of my career in where in where I was like a pretty you know 
a little bit more than a background actor, which is, mm -hmm. you know, you respect that a lot. I have done it a lot, a lot yeah. of that, but for me now, it's not something that I put in my CV, you know, the Centeno <laughs> noise. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just thought working with Carmen was, was, was a nice little thing to put in your cap. Um, <laughs> I, I, I also... <laughs> You you also I'm not gonna say the the I'm gonna say the English translation of it. Uh, also another film that you were part of with a phenomenal another phenomenal actress. Uh, Wild District is the English translation for it. I don't want to mispronounce it, so I'll call it Wild District with um, uh, Christina uh, Christina Umana. Uh, and, another, and if and anyone from that knows Narcos, she played uh, Judy Mogado in Narcos. Um, another fantastic actress, and she's done a good job of crossing over into a, a lot of American uh, films and TV as well. Obviously, Narcos I guess is a combo because it's very a lot of a lot of um, Spanish is spoken that, and, is, and then it's like half Spanish, half English. So I don't even know if you call that a crossover necessarily. Uh, but even her, I know you had a scene where you guys uh, was like a news desk, and you guys are kind of kind of talking. So I, I, you know, and you can see there was a little bit of an intensity. I don't know if there was. I couldn't understand what you guys are saying because I don't speak I don't speak Spanish. But it looked like you guys were a little intense. Uh, but another what, what's I mean to share to share the screen with her, another phenomenal actress. Um, how was that to work with with her? Well, Cristina is one of the top actresses of Colombia, and uh, that if I if I believed in luck, uh, that would be like a lucky point of my career to get to act with her, uh, because she's one of the best actresses in Colombia, and that, and that specific project, the Wild District, was very important to me because actually that pulled me out of the Cinceno no hay paraíso type of projects, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, actually that was the first scene that I got to, to, to shot in the show, that uh, scene of the news yeah. set and all of that. And uh, when, we, when we met, when we first met, it was in the makeup room and uh, she asked me to, you know, practice the line with her and uh, that helped me out to, to, you know, feel more comfortable because that was the first time that I was going to act with a top actor or a top actress in my, you know, uh, five uh, category uh, career that I had at that, at that time, you know? Yeah. So um, it, of course, it gave me what I am telling you, which is improving and uh, getting better as an actor, because in, in that kind of opportunities, you don't have a chance to miss anything. So yeah, the director was happy. Christina was happy and I was happy. And uh, after that, it's not that we become friends and all of that, but we get along pretty cool with her. And anytime that I have the chance to meet her or to, or to talk with her is something that, uh, you know, nourish me as an actor a lot. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see her tonight. Oh, uh, okay. Because tonight is the is the premiere of Noticia de un Secuestro, which is uh, a project in, in which he in, in which she is uh, a star, and I am invited to the you know premiere and all of that. So I am gonna meet her tonight. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Very cool. Time, very cool. Tell her. As, tell her we said hello. Tell her Robin. Robin <laughs> yeah, Jean said hello. <laughs> tell her I love her as Judy Mancada in uh in in Narcos. <laughs> yeah. She um, gets it all the time, I'm sure. I am a fan of Narcos. I, uh, that's a pretty cool story because I love Narcos, uh, which is something that here in Colombia is weird because Colombians, we don't appreciate Narcos yeah. too much. Because yeah. we, we have another kind of actors and of content that have talked talk about that same uh, matter before. And the way they have talked about that same matter is the way that we Colombians like to watch that and, and narcos is more like an international thing and all of that but julie Mon moncada is a badass person yeah. and it's so good yeah. and it's so cool yep. that i am pretty i am proud of of work of have to work along with christina and with juan pablo raba which is the main character of, of wild district and with you know christian tap and there was a lot of you know top colombian actors and that a specific project gave me the respect that I didn't have before in my career. It's not mm -hmm. that I was a respectful actor, but the producers didn't just get a word of my, you know, existence in the yeah. industry. 
Uh, it was like it was like your breakthrough. It was your it was your breakthrough performance. It was your chance to 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 move to that next level. Um, you know, and it's funny you you brought up how it's you know the the narcos kind of films and shows are looked upon differently. I guess it's, it's probably a lot to do with a lot of the trauma that the the, the country's had to endure through all that. We we interviewed uh, Maria Cecilia Botero um, on the show once before, and she had always said that's the one role she would never want to play is in, in, in something like that. And because she, she she lived through where it, it was so it was such a damaging time to to her country that she just it's she doesn't feel right playing those kinds of roles. So I can understand both sides of it. And at the same time, it's so, listen. It's, at the same time, it's it those were that's it was a well written project, Narcos, and and you know, and it, it's kind of I remember when I was watching it. Um, I remember thinking, well, are they going to do a season about Griselda Blanco, who is, you know, speaking of Judy Mercado being a badass, Griselda Blanco is like maybe the badass of all badasses, uh, <laughs> male or female. And 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 again, it's not part of the Narco series, but Netflix put the series this together. Let's and so let's get into that a little bit. Um, Griselda Bl- uh, Griselda starring Sofia Vergara as Griselda Blanco, who is like gangstress of the world, uh, nicknamed the Black Widow. Um, just, you know, I think she, if I, if I, if I remember the history of her the, correctly, I think she, she had like five husbands taken out. I, I don't, or, or some number of husbands did not last long. Uh, maybe that's why she got the black widow moniker. Um, exactly. but, <laughs> but what was it like to be part of this project? What drew you to it? And for it to be uh, such a, a big part of the history of Columbia, what was it like to be part of this project and how did you get involved with it? Well, I must say that I respect, you know, the opinion of, you know, don't talk about the Colombian issue of the cocaine and of the, you know, narco capos and all of mm-hmm. that. And I respect that, but nobody's talking about that in the schools and in the, mm-hmm. in the universities and in all the, the spaces where Colombians must know about this because this has been the history of Colombia since 40 years ago to now. And 40 years is not a little thing, you know? Yeah. It shaped our way and our fashion and our way of living during 40 years. Uh, and, and for me, I respect, of course, I respect the, you know, the point of don't talk about that and don't, but to me, that's a history class. Even yeah. though, it's fictional, and who says that the things that are in the workbooks and in the in the in the history books are real? Mm-hmm. That's you know, too, and that 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 has been editorialized the same way as a series. So yeah. I support that the producers talk about this because it's the only way that Colombians and the world get to know this part of the history, which I mean. It goes to every part of the world through the noise, through the nose, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it is influencing the, the whole world. So why, why to turn our back to this matter that is actually happening? So yeah. that brings me with the narco thing, which I made like four or five uh, auditions to be part of narcos, even in a small role and all of that. And I got never had the, the opportunity to be part of Narcos, which was my favorite show in the well, until I watched True Detective, which is another thing. Oh, yeah, but, fantastic. Uh, but uh, Narcos is one of my favorites. So uh, I was living already in LA, in, in Los Angeles, and uh, I was passing through a very hard time to, uh, with all the quarantine thing and the COVID 19. I was actually working in a restaurant uh, as a assistant, as a cook assistant, because I know how to cook since I was a reality TV show director of cooking shows, you know, cook okay. shows, of chef shows, mm-hmm. master shows, all of that. So, uh, and uh, Maria, Maria Ibanez, my manager, and Vanessa of m and Talent, they called me uh, to make an audition in a very dark moment of my life. So I made this audition with all my heart and uh, and getting to and my you know my my proposal was to uh, portray a, a, a gangster of Manizales of my own of my own uh, born place you know 
where I when where I am come from, where I come from, which is Manizales, and all the, the the memories that I had when I was a child of these people in the 80s, uh, these flamboyant people, these people that is like good taste people, but is not really good taste, and uh, they are very uh, colloquial and they are very folkloric and there are like Colombians that I didn't see before uh, in the narco show or something like that. I believe that they uh, already had like a, a very wide uh, ranch of, of traquetos, which are the which is the name of the Colombian gangsters. Okay. Uh, they they had this wide ranch of traquetos, and I was like, well, the tra the, the traqueto that I am going to portray, I believe, maybe I'm wrong that this is something that they have not seen before, this kind of traqueto. So I got that, you know, that conviction in my mind. So I made the audition. And fortunately, I, I was selected to be part of the, this show. It is a dream for me. It is, you know, I didn't imagine that I, uh, I, I was going to have this chance in my career that soon because I was passing through, through pretty hard moments in LA. And uh, I was, you know, as I told you, I was willing to make secondary roles, even backgrounds or something like that. I, was, yeah. I didn't, uh, because that was my commitment when I decided to be an actor. And, um, but when I got this part in this show and uh, all the researching, all the study that I put in, into this character, to end up at the first day of the, the first day of shooting, meeting Sofia Vergara with all her, you know, makeup and, and portraying this badass woman, and how and the challenge to okay, this guy is kind of a, of her enemy, and she's already pretty badass. So how am I going to be, you know, worse than her? Mm -hmm. uh, since she is already, you know, the worst, yeah. so kind of a challenge, and uh, and the relationship that we built with Sofia instead was pretty funny because we had to deal with all this, you know, rage that we in the characters had uh, against each other. So we played a lot in the in the set and backstage, uh, making jokes and you know, bullying each other yeah, and. Uh, yeah. We built this kind of relationship, and it was so beautiful. Sofia is not only a gorgeous woman and a great person, but she is a great actress. And I believe mm -hmm. that this is something that is going to be in the screen when Griselda uh, comes out. People is gonna notice the heart that this woman put it in this character, and uh, and how she is able to portray. A very, a very dramatic uh, uh, character and a very, you know, uh, dark person, a badass person, but with all the, you know, with all the humoristic and the the, the hilarious thing that she as a as an actress has, and of the Colombian culture, because Griselda Blanco was a costeña, a, a person from the coast in Colombia, which is people, you know, uh, pretty different from the Bogota person. Mm -hmm. People from the coast are, are happy, are smiling, and they are very vital. And uh, of course, it was, to me, it was a dream. And of course, the, the challenge of my life and uh, is what I was dreaming of. Yeah. To get a with a, with a, you know a role with a name a role with a dimension a, a, a role with depth and where I could improve all the things that I was ready to do yeah yes 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 yeah and yeah. and now and, oh, go ahead Jane go ahead, go ahead no no you go ahead I was gonna say and now that's such a big thing on your resume like you said and now hopefully that's just another notch and another networking thing that will lead to, to more and more yeah yeah I, you know, after Griselda, I got auditions for you know shows that I had never imagined that I was that I was gonna audition over there. Yeah, so yeah. 
Yeah, the, the only challenge now is to, you know, am, am, am I going to be a Russian or a Spanish or a German? Or a... <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I think I think it's poised to be a huge hit, especially with the success of Narcos um, on Netflix. And every, listen, Netflix does everything right. Always Arc, Narcos. I mean, every, they, they, Netflix knows, knows how to produce programs, right? So I think yeah. Griselda is going to be that next huge hit that they have. And I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a little bit of a of a of a. Of a um, a, a, a mind-numbing experience for a lot of people in the U.S. because we all know in the U.S. I know I, I know Sofia Vergara has got a long history because she was a, a famous in Colombia before she before she made the crossover. But we all know her from her famous her famous role on Modern Family, where she was like the lovable young wife of Ed O'Neill. Um, so it's going to be a different look. It's going to I mean, unless you know the history of Griselda Blanco, you, you would maybe you wouldn't know, but. It's going to be a different look than people I think are used to seeing with Sofia Vergara. So I think it's going to, I, I got to imagine if you're Sofia Vergara, you got to be able to love to be able to just totally flip it on people like that. Right. So um, I, I think it's just, I mean, I don't, it, I just know how Netflix does stuff. I, just, I can't imagine it not being a huge hit. I'm excited to see it. Uh, when, when, when is it due for release? Do we know yet? Do you have it? Is there dates yet for it? Well, first I will say that uh, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned, for instance, the Narcos team, the producers and the writers and all of that, is the same team that is behind it. Is. Uh, even yeah, yeah, though yeah. it's a spin-off or is not like uh, something related uh, in, 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 the, in the form as Narcos, because Narcos has a, a look more like a documentary and more like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. journalistic thing. Griselda is a fiction format a dramatic format and uh you mentioned ozark and uh the director of photography of uh Griselda blanco who is armando salas he was the director of photography of the first three seasons of ozark mm -hmm. so oh all the, quality, all the quality and visual quality and all of the quality that netflix is used to bring in in their big shots um is in this series so um they are putting a lot of work and uh, and in effort in this uh the director andy Vice, who directs all the episodes um of the of the of the season of the series because uh, as far as i know it's gonna be just one season um he is a person who understands the colombian culture in a way that is never seen before. I mean, the, the things that, that, that you're going to watch in Griselda is so Colombian, but at the same time, the, you know, the quality and the treatment of the thing is, is so international that it's a part that we really want to know about all this, you know, uh, sad business of the cocaine, which we already know who were the capos in Colombia and who were the capos in, in South America. But we had the gap of who run the business in in United States, you know? Uh -huh. mm. and, it starts, and it starts with all the Griselda thing. Not, not, not especially with Griselda. Actually, it starts with my character, but, uh, but uh, all that gap must, to, must be filled up. So the people have a, a, a wider, you know, yeah. version of the thing. They say it's gonna be out on uh, on next year. Uh, I don't really know which month. I believe that it's gonna be like on November. I thought that it was gonna be out at by the end of this year because they didn't okay. produce the season of Narcos, and usually Narcos comes out like in November gotcha. uh, of years. So mm -hmm. I thought. It to come out in November, but it has a lot of post-production work, and I have worked as a post-producer, so I know all the, you know, the difficulties that you have to uh, overcome when it when it comes to deliver a TV show, a whole new TV show, which means which music is gonna be in, on it, how it's gonna be the editing. Uh, pace and the editing style of the series, how it's going to be, you know, the color or the offline montage or the credits even. Uh, it's a lot of work in the post-production. So uh, even though the, the series already 
finished their, you know, the filming part of the principal photography, the principal photography part, uh, it, there's a lot of work uh, ahead uh, to finish the series. I, uh, yeah, I, I can imagine that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so here's what we do. Uh, Camilo, we, we play a game called Lightning Lane. So we're going to ask you 10 rapid fire questions. Um, okay. And first answer off the top of your head. You ready to play? Sure. Let's do it. All right, Patty, ra- ra- roll the clip. All right. Well, I want me in the big screen. Come on, Patty. There you go. All right, Camilo. <laughs> First question, favorite late night snack? <laughs> Cereal. Okay. What uh, kind? Jo- uh, Joey O. Jo- with ice cream. Ooh, with, with ice, ice cream. cream. I don't think we, we don't have, do we have Joey O's here? I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I don't know if you can promote it, but it's the Trader Joe's generic brand. Oh, Trader store. Joe's. Trader Joe. Okay. I gotcha. didn't, all right. I didn't, okay. Okay. Um, if you could have any any animal in the world as a pet, what would it be? An animal as a pet. Any, oh, doesn't, would... Anything. An elephant or a horse. Ooh. Okay. I like the elephant. Yeah. I like the elephant, man. Like kings used to ride on elephants, right? Like so, didn't they? I think they did. Um, <laughs> yeah, in Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> in Aladdin, yes. Yeah, All right, it's true. Good point. If you could go back to school, what would you want to study? What would you want? What? Sorry. If if you could go back to school again, what would you want to study if you went back? What 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 kind of courses? I believe that I I studied what I wanted to study, so I I, I would go back and, and be more, you know, uh, ah, discipline. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. All right, cool. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you like to live? Los Angeles, California. I already live there. I know which is. I know it's not easy. I know it's is not pretty at all. Uh, but I like. I like it. Yeah, right. that's the way. That's the way to be. I, I always say because I'm in Orlando. I can't imagine not being in Orlando because for me it has everything I need here. Maybe Mexico City is pretty. Is pretty nice. Or okay. Cali. Yeah, I love Cali here in Colombia. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What is your worst habit? My worst habit, I believe, is to don't. Uh, well, procrastinate. I, I believe. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hey, we all do that to some yeah. extent. Yeah. 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 What's your uh, What's your favorite food? My favorite food is Panang curry. Okay. Ooh. I okay. thought you were going to hit us with something like Sancocho or something like that, man. That's. Well, Adeja Paisa, of course, is, is one of my, my favorite food. But yeah, it, it's, it's been hard to, you know, discover which is my favorite food. But pana, chicken panang panan curry with white rice, that makes my day. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, what would be your wish from a genie? My witch for what? From a genie. If you found a genie, like a genie lamp, what would be your first wish from a genie? I would say that I would like to have the power of persuasion. Yeah. Ah, I like one. it. I like it. <laughs> That's a good one. There you go. That's a, good, that's a powerful yeah. one. Um, currently, what is your, what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear is to don't overcome frustration when it comes because it's inevitable. So, uh, yeah, to don't be able to overcome without frustration or without frustrating episode in my life. Okay. That would be my, my biggest fear. Okay. Uh, what would you be doing for a career if you weren't doing what you're doing now? If you weren't acting, what would you be doing? Oh no, man! I I can yeah. answer that. But I I've done a lot no. of stuff, <laughs> and I already done that. So uh, if 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 I hadn't haven't decided 
to be an actor and a fiction director, I believe that I, I would be, you know, producing reality TV shows and driving a BMW as a yeah. TV producer. Now I ride the bus and the metro as an actor and I'm happier. And you're happy. There you go. Yes. That's what that's what that's all that matters, right? This, yeah. This is this is an interesting question for an actor, but what is your favorite movie? What's the one movie that this is my favorite movie? Well, it's hard, but I would say that match point of Woody Allen. Yes, okay. Yeah, great choice. Yeah. Yeah. Great choice. Yeah. All right. We actually have one bonus question for you. Uh, what was the best advice you've ever received and who gave it to you? Repeat, please. <laughs> what was the best advice that you've ever gotten and who gave you that advice? My best advice. I don't know who gave it to me. It was a Twitter account. Uh, okay. <laughs> but it was something like, it's not that kind of advice, but it resounded me for a long time. And it's like, winners are losers that keep trying. Oh, I love that. You know, I've seen that hell recently too somewhere. And I love that quote. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Every, I can't tell you. So we, we asked that question um, of every guest because we, it's such a great way to learn. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many people have given us some form of just don't quit. That like that is such a powerful message in some form of just that's that is the difference between making it and not making it. Other people give up, and if you don't give up, you're getting you're gonna get further. Yeah. It's easy, it's easy to conclude that because you know if you quit, you will never know when it's gonna be your chance. Yes. So and it could have been the that. next time. Don't quit and be ready. Be ready yes. means a lot. You not you need to be ready to, you know, kill zombies or to defend your own existence or to, you know, eat something that you don't want to eat or just be ready and don't quit. And, and you know so, what? You, you said earlier, I don't even know if you said it. You said it so quickly in passing. You said, I don't believe in luck. And I think yes. that pe people that don't believe in luck are people that believe in exactly what you said, not quitting and being ready. Because when the opportunity presents itself, that those are the only two things you need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I expect the people who believe in who believe in love, but believing in love is is leaving a lot to other things that is not yourself, yes. and uh, it gives room to complaints and to don't work in yourself and to don't work in the things that you must do and all of that. So yeah, it's not that I don't believe for real because sometimes I feel like oh. Um, I'm not running with love or something like that, but I struggle to don't believe in love. I mean, I, it's not it's not good for a person like me to believe in love. Mm -hmm. I, I, like and I think I think at that point it's because you know you got to make your own luck, and it helps you just it's it's in your hands and not anybody else's, right? I tend to always think I I don't believe in good luck. I just believe in bad luck because <laughs> I just want to. I need something to blame, so um, that, that's why. Uh, Camilo, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Uh, it's been an honor and a treat, man. All the way from Colombia. Um, and we're really looking forward to Griselda, man. So we're looking at it by next year. We should be out in 2023. Uh, you, who else, besides you and Sofia Vergara, who else can people look for in that in that series? Uh, well, in the, if I am understanding well the question, uh, it's going to be like a lot of pretty talented actors, both uh, famous and both non-famous, mm -hmm. that are going to have like a way to show their talent. It's gonna be uh, Christian Tapan. It's gonna be uh, Vanessa Perlito, which which is an actress that uh, was a star of a Tarantino film called Death Proof. The mm -hmm. the mix yes. and all of that. She she was that 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 lady. And uh, in, the, in, in the car, the the main one in the car in Death Proof. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Guerra, who was one of the first of the main characters in in Narcos. Uh, the third season of Narcos Mexico, he, he played the role of Mayo Zambada. Um, it's going to be Diego Trujillo, which is a legend in Colombia. Juliet Restrepo, she is, I mean, one of the top actresses here in Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be 
well, Sofia, uh, all the people that is in that show. Actually, I'm not. I don't know if it's gonna be like a, an incident thing to say, but Andy Bice, the director of the series, who is a genius himself, uh, he knows and he says that this this is the best cast that he has already put together wow. in a wow. Production. Wow! And, and it's, I gotta imagine this is one of those series that when people heard that they were casting for it, I feel like a lot of people wanted to be part of it. You know, I mean, you could just you knew just if, after seeing what they did with Narcos and a lot of the other stuff that Netflix done has done. Um, I gotta imagine a lot of people wanted to be attached to this project, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be fantastic. I can't wait, Camilo. Yes, Carol G is gonna be in the in in, in Griselda. Carol G, which now is a, is a oh big star, and yeah. she's gonna be. In, in part of the series, I, I forgot to tell Paulina Davila. It's a lot of you know top actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very cool, very cool. Well, guy, listen, Camilo, thank you so much for stopping in, man. We can't wait to see it. Um, uh, and good luck, good luck in the future, man. We we'd love to have you back. Thank you very much. It was a pretty cool interview. Uh, the best I have ever had. Uh, oh, thank you. Not bad for a couple of gringos, right? <laughs> You were so clear. Uh, I didn't know that I was able to answer that good in English. You so. did, man. You did a great job, man. Wonderfully. Wonderfully. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, me and Piano Rob will wrap it up. Thanks again, Camilo. Cute. Well, Winnie the Cute. Rawr, Jurassic cute. You're not trash. You're cute. This is Sammy. Sammy loves Disney ears. She loves ears so much, huh, she makes her own. Yeah, 3D ears. Want to see her do it? Huh, let's check it out. Here she's making bows. Here she also makes ears. And sometimes she makes ears with bows. Any kind you want. People have been seeing her with her ears and they're saying, Hey, can I get me some ears? Pow, yeah, you can. Here you go. Now Sammy's making ears for any occasions. Ears for dogs, ears for spooky stuff, you name it. Ears for any occasion. And it's all happening at JSA Creations. JSA Creations, just ask for Sammy. Guys, just ask for Sammy. Get yourself some JSA Creation ears. Man. What a good, what a, what a fun night. Guys, I, look out for that Griselda. It's going to be a beast when that comes out. It's, go, it's right going to be good. It's going to be the hit of, of, of the year on, on Netflix, they're, man. They're taking their time with that release on purpose. They're, they're, they're putting I, it out when they want it, but, but it's, it's gonna, it's going to be great. It's, I also love Gene that we, how international we've taken this show because yeah. it doesn't matter where anybody is from. We all run on some type of passion and dreams yep. and hardware. It's this, it's great. It's great to see what's universal. I love it. I, I agree, man. Um, and, and what a nice guy. Uh, pleasure getting to meet him, getting to have him on. But guys, make sure you go check it out. Mods are going to put the links down below so you can find it out where to find Camilo. Um, and he'll keep, and, and, and keep you updated with Griselda and everything else he's got going on. Uh, but you know what? Let's, uh, it's time to get out of here, so let's do our thank yous. Uh, let's thank Patty Puddles on the other side for the production of the show today, even though we screwed up the first commercial break. Um, but then let's also thank... Let's thank the mods for keeping the chat fun, friendly, safe, and make sure those links go about below there. Uh, let's thank the chat for showing up and having a good time hanging out with us today. Let's thank our subs for taking this journey, subscribing to the channel, taking this journey with us. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much. The fact that you guys keep coming here and you and you, and you support you support us the way you do is what feeds our fuel to basically bring you guys great content. So we, we appreciate you guys. Uh, let's also thank... Our guest, Camilo Jimenez Varone. Uh, guys, not much more to say other than I can't wait to I can't wait to see Griselda and what else he has in store for his career. Um, and Piano Rob, man, what do you got going on? I know we gotta check the Facebook. We're gonna check that Facebook, find out where you're performing for the weeks people are in town. Right? Let's be honest, but we, 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 we check out where I'm performing. We're go, we're going horror nights strong right now because that's what's, that, that's what's happening this time of year. Um, follow along. I know we, 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 you know what? We probably shouldn't be saying this for months, but, but if you love the show, please share it out there with your friends and family too. Yes, there's so much. Sure. We, 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 we like to think there's something that everybody can take from it, from certain episodes. So, uh, 
please. Yeah. We, we, we love that we're growing. We'll keep bringing them to you. Definitely. Yeah. If you're having a good time, man, just uh, include a, invite a friend, bring a friend next time. Um, but yes, yeah, so it make sure, and make sure you check out Rob's TikToks and his reels. He's doing a great job with TikToks and reels. Do uh, it. There you go. So, guys, we're going to get out of here, man. But, hey, listen, have a great today, a better tomorrow, and we will see you next time.